Bruce, he must be a cagey guy. He must be really perceptive. How did he try to figure you out to get to trust you? What, what, what was your vibe on that? Um, I think you know what Landau told me was that he said, look, when it came time for him to finally decide whether he was actually going to show up or not, he told John, he said, look, I gotta, this guy's been working on this thing so hard and doing so much stuff, I've got to honor you know, his work. And so... Uh, Sounds you know, very Bruce-like. Yeah, 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 yeah. So it was, so John said, great, because he'd been lobbying on this the whole time. But when we finally, we were getting ready for the first big formal interview, he goes, I said, you know, Bruce, I really appreciate this. And he says, well, you know, he goes, Mr. Landau's ass is somewhat on the line on this one. <laughs> Which is, <laughs> I thought was interesting, both because it was funny and also because it... Uh, it, uh, it, it revealed just a little bit about the, the relationship between Bruce and John. And let's also not forget that when John, working on his own as a rock and roll critic in the early 70s, decided that he wanted to kind of be known as the king of the rock critics, you know, because Chris Gow was the dean, Absolutely. So Bruce, so, so, which is academic and cool sound. I mean, that's a, that's a good job to have. But John went for king, which is, how do you get above that? And, you know, who knew that, that he would end up Getting, in, get, getting into business with a guy who wanted to be known as the boss. So these are, these are boys who were born to, to play together. Yes, ma'am? I, I was 